Okay, lepas normal line, what happened to the angle after um, okay, when you move out of the prism? Tu so, sama jugalah. Okay, it's just that, okay, kalau tadi dia less than the angle of incident, tapi kalau yang ni, this is angle of incident, okay, yang ni angle of incident, into the prism, okay, refraction punya rules to apply, betul? So, the angle into the prism, lesser, dekat sini, less. Now, out of the prism, the angle should be Greater than this one. Okay. Sebab dah medium yang berbeza. However, we just make sure dia below than this one. The green one tu. So kat mana tu dia sama tengok. Look at the angle. So angle kita nak macam mana. Okay. Yang ni tak boleh straight. Yang ni less. So dia mesti greater than that. So nampak dia tu lah. So where's the angle? So here is the angle. Okay. Nampak sikit the angle tu greater. Right? So when you have this, so that confirm eh, uh, tells us that you know, you understand what is happening here. So you either, what's the mark here? Yeah? Three marks. Okay, are the normal lines drawn? Okay, you know how to draw the normal line. So you know, the normal line, there must be a surface. And then the normal line, nampak tak? It's perpendicular to the surface. Yeah? So senang je, you take your ruler. Kalau awak ada macam mana? Hmm, kalau uh, protector pun boleh tak kisah. Maksud, what, I'm try, what I'm trying to say is, kalau ini dia punya prism, kan? Awak ambil ruler. When you take ru your ruler, kan? Awak letak je ruler awak tu. Alamak, kat ada hujung kan? Awak ambil hujung ruler tu, nampak tengok ni. So, if you see the the line tu, nampak line tu. Line ni. Line kat pembaris tu, mesti align dengan tu. Maksudnya perpendicular lah tu. So, gariskan sahajalah. So, that's perpendicular. Ini perpendicular. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Ha, yang ni kalau kat sini pun sama. Kita ambil ruler tu. Okay, letak satu line dekat situ pada pembaris. Ah Itu perpendicular. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, one, one mark and then second mark kat situ. Right, and the so and then this is what we call as. Ini nama dia adalah emerging ray. Mana uh, refracted ray? So refracted ray, the the one that inside tu, the first one refracted tu. Ah, uh, ni adalah refracted ray. So you you kena baca soalan. Apa yang dia nak? Dia nak sampai emerging ray. So draw sampai belakang. Now B, the wavelength of the blue light is in air is 4.8 times 10 to the power negative 7 meters. Calculate the frequency. So that's not difficult. Tapi tiga markah. Because there are expectations from you. Ha, apa ni siapa dah buat? Siapa dah buat? You all dah buat sendiri kan? So what do you know about okay, frequency V equals to? Okay so untuk where wave. Tengok all your notes. What's the formula? You kena tulis formula dulu. V equals to F lambda. Okay, what the question wants? Frequency and what's the form? How the formula will look like? V over wavelength. Jadi, what's the V? The V is C. Bagus. So, what's C? What is the value of C? 3 times. 10 to the power of 8 meter per second divide by that value. That is super easy. Okay, super easy. Look at that. Saya potong mm. <coughs> okay, and then you just press your calculator. What's the answer? Times 10 to the power of? 10 to the power of? 14, siapa yang dah dapat? Look at, the, look at the unit. What's the unit now? S negative 1 per second. And that's correct. Sebab 1, okay, 1 per second is equivalent to 1 hertz. Kalau you tak tahu formula frequency adalah hertz, you can just write 
per second like this. So jangan malas eh. You just don't leave don't leave your answer macam ni saja. You write again kat sini. Apa yang susahnya tak ambil masa lama pun tulis balik di sini. If you know the unit, letak sini hertz. If you don't know it's hertz, you just write per second pun betul. Cuma jangan tulis dua-dua macam ni. Ha, itu berdosa. <laughs> okay, so that's the answer. Very easy. Tapi kalau awak tak dapat markah, first because you don't know the formula and then you don't know this value. Okay, you kena tahu kalau line in air, line in vacuum in air, the value is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay. Ni soalan top, uh, soalan saja yang lain saya tambah. Okay, ada kan awak dapat kan? Figure 7.1 shows a ray of monochromatic red light in air. Incident on a glass block at an angle of incident of 50 degree. State what is mean, what is meant by monochromatic light. So what is monochromatic light? Okay, you kena tahu dia adalah single wave ataupun dia kata what light kan? It's a light. What about the light? Light with single frequency ataupun with single wavelength frequency. Apa lagi? Color. Mana-mana boleh jadi jawapan. Okay, nak letak tiga-tiga pun boleh tapi jangan contradict lah. Make sure. Okay, and then kita nak tengok, uh, what's the other? Okay, for this red re, the refractive index of the glass is 1.52. So that ends, that's N. Calculate the angle of refraction for the re. So that's easy. They just bagi tahu refractive index sahaja. Jadi kita nak guna formula apa? Okay, sin I over sin R. So that's equal to 1.52. You kena pandai gunalah calculator. So what is I? 50. So sin 50. Sin 50 equals to sin R. Oh, sorry, divide by sin R. Okay, you rearrange this one. Da, 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 da. So dapat R berapa? 20. 30.2 degree. Betul? Okay, nak tinggalkan 30 sahaja pun boleh. Okay, next. Without measuring angles, use a ruler to draw the approximate path of the ray in the glass block and the emerging from the block. So, the two marks for two lines. Okay, approximate path of the ray in the glass block. So, senang saja. Apa prinsip dia? Apa rules dia? Angle must be less. Okay. Tak boleh sama. Ini sama. So, tengok baris awak. Kalau buat macam ni, ni sama. Jadi, kita turunkan supaya dia less. Okay. If you draw until like this, you will get only one mark. Tapi, ni tak dapat markah. Sorry. Kenapa? Tak ada arrow. Angle tu tak kisah lagi lah. Tapi, kat sini kita kena nampak. Dia, eh, dia, dia dengan uh, mata kasar, dia dah. Okay, next we have to draw the, the emerging ray. So that's sebelum emerging ray tu, you draw first the 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 what the normal line, and then the emerging ray must be more than two. So it's about fifty, kacau tu. Okay, right? So what's the answer? Okay, so that's mark the mark. Okay, ini pun dah betul. Boleh? Arrow mesti ada. Selalu saya pelajar dia seronok lukis. Dia faham-faham, senang-senang. Arrow tak ada. Dah salah. Alright, mark your paper. One, okay, another drawing question. Figure 6.1 shows part of the path, part of the path of a ray of light PQ traveling in an optical fiber. Where can you find an optical fiber? Banyak tempat lah kan? Okay, you boleh jumpa optical fiber dekat, dekat rumah, dekat internet semua tu. Okay. 
Explain what is meant by total internal reflection. Jadi kat sini berapa markah? Three marks. So that's not that difficult. Very easy. They even, in fact, dia tanya state the conditions under which it occurs. Okay, that's easy. You know them already. First, apa dia? We discussed this thoroughly last time. Okay. It, yes, so phenomena of light traveling from denser medium to less dense medium. Okay, and then the second point. Okay, the incident angle is greater than the very good critical angle and then incident angle equals to reflection reflected angle reflection angle boleh lah all right so three marks for that ada lagi what else can you say? Apa lagi yang awak tulis? Itu je. <coughs> okay. Sebenarnya semua tu dah belajar kan? Hari tu. Bukan dah belajar lah. Dah, dah revise balik. Carefully complete. Do we want complete the path of the rail line until it reaches the end R of the optical fiber? Siapa yang dah draw? I would like to see your answer. Is it the angle equal to refraction angle? So, where is the use your ruler draw the draw the normal line Okay, somewhere there. So, this is the angle. Ha, ha, ha. So, I want something uh, kita nak si, angle tu similar. Kalau boleh sama lah. Tapi kalau dengan naked eye tu kita nampak lebih kurang sama. Jadi kalau saya draw macam ni. You see ah, The angle sama ke? Sini. Tak lagi. Sini. Lebih kurang. Jadi kat sini sebenarnya dia tak touch. Itulah sama. So actually you should draw only one ray. Dia not reflected many times. Who have drawn tadi? Cuba you tengok dulu yang angle you all tu. Betul tak saya cakap angle you all tu lesser than it should be? Kan? Ah, uh, figure 9.1 shows three rays of light parallel to the axis of a thin converging line. So now kita moving towards refraction ray of light, refraction light tapi specifically Thin lens, eh? Kita tengok thin lens punya topik. The rays strike the first surface of the lens, F1 and F2, are the two principal foci of the lens. Okay, describe and explain what happens to the top ray as it... The top ray, this one lah. Okay, so this one you have to explain. Three marks for explanation. So what do you, what are you going to explain? Sorry, dia akan Okay, drawing ray line Kita ada rules dia Rules of drawing Rules of drawing Ray line Tapi kalau true lens eh Ni for lens So for lens First, kita ada parallel line Jadi we don't have to mention the parallel line Because the line we are talking about Is already parallel to the exit Mana exit? Exit kat tengah-tengah ni Okay Next Number two, when it's parallel and then dia akan two focal point. Saya buat simbol saja F. F means point, focal point. So, nah, maksudnya we are talking about the same rail line. So, bila dia pada, um, okay, so this is the line. Okay, and then later, something happened to it. 
and it will bend itself towards focal point. Jadi itu yang kita nak tulis dalam bentuk perkataan. Alright. Okay, apa lagi rules dia? And then the third rule is, so this is lens. Kita tahu lens ni dia ada axis dekat tengah-tengah and dia ada pusat dekat tengah-tengah. Pusat tu dekat mana? Pusat tu is the middle of the lens. So kita panggil pusat tu O. O tu adalah optical center. You must know every detail of this. F tu apa, O tu apa, the line semua tu. Jadi O is O. Maksudnya kat sini bila saya kata these are the rules of drawing lens, right? you must follow this one. Kalau soalan tu dia just bagi, contoh ada tak? Ha, kalau soalan just bagi macam ni, let's say dia kata, okay, draw the object somewhere here. Kalau objek dekat situ, dia kata complete the ray diagram. So you follow the rule. For first rule, parallel. So you draw parallel. Okay, mesti ada line. And then second rule apa tadi? <coughs> F. F this one. Boleh, pass through. Okay, and then the third one. Optical center. Jadi Sydney optical center. So you draw optical center. So, teruskan sampailah jumpa uh, intersection of the two lines. Okay. Oops. Uh, sampailah ujung. Nanti dia jumpa dekat ujung, you draw kat situ. So, if that's that lah. Okay. Tapi jangan lupa arrow. So, this one is very powerful. You have to know this one. Parallel FO. FO. Okay. So, this one for drawing of lens. Okay. Lens. Jadi, we you are going to write that in term uh, ni lah. You are going to describe those lines dalam bentuk perkataan. <coughs> Jadi. Dia kata apa? The line dah parallel dah ada dah. This one. <coughs> the line. The parallel line will. Bend. Bend. Satu pun kita kata refract pun boleh lagi. <coughs> Okay. Next, kita kata Dia akan bend ke, bend ke mana Bend this way Bend this way Ataupun which way <coughs> ha, Nampak macam downwards Bend downwards Ataupun bend towards Towards Focal point Okay, is that all? Okay, you, okay, so now, okay, just now, now you are just, what you are doing, what you, what I have already written is just describing the ray light. Tutup mulut, uh, mengawak. Yeah, I'm just describing. Saya describe, tahu tak? Macam awak, awak tinggi, lampai, uh, boleh berlari, contoh. Kenapa awak boleh berlari? Oh, ada motivasi apa semua. That explanation, faham? Jadi sekarang ni another point sebab kat sini ada three marks. So you need to explain why this happens. What is this to? This to I refer to what? Why is it bending? Why? Why is it bending downwards? So must have explanation for that. Betul? Why are you sleeping? Contoh. Must have explanation. Kan takkanlah awak tidur saya saja. Okay. Jadi the explanation is it bends because... Okay, speed change. How is it changing? Reduces when entering glass. Ataupun entering when, uh, something that have higher refractive index. The lens tu. Lens tu ada higher refractive index. Okay. Just now we did this. Okay, we did this. This one fenomena apa, Raib? Ini fenomena apa? Refraction. Jadi bila refraction, bending of light happens. Kenapa bending of light? Answer me. What's the answer just now? Why bending of light happens? Because of change of speed. Bagus.
okay <coughs> okay speed change bila speed change ada bending of light ingat tak hari tu saya cerita pasal awak berjalan dekat jalan tak tiba-tiba ada pasir so awak tak boleh nak lari laju kalau awak tengah berlari okay sebab ada medium yang berbeza Right, because of medium berbeza, jadi dia punya speed of light pun berbeza. That's why ada bending. So, keep that in mind. Kenapa ada bending of light? Kenapa refraction happen? Speed change. And then, saya tanya, kenapa speed change? Different medium, different density, different refractive index. Nampak tak flow of answering tu? <coughs> The reason behind it. Okay. On figure 9.1, use a ruler complete three rays through the lens until they reach about 5 cm to the right of the lens. Okay, two marks for this. How to get the three marks? Eh, hey, three plus two. Okay, siapa yang dah draw? Saya tengok. Saya tak beritahu bapak-bapak markah. Siapa dah draw? Angkat tangan. Okay, saya kira-kira ni siapa tak draw draw sekarang kan? Saya dekat dengan mana-mana awak. Sebab ni kertas dah lama dah ni. Saya tak saya tak mikrofon lupa pula. Sakit pula tekak aku. 
Hari ni puasa pula. Lepas tu. Uh, itulah batuk ni rasa macam nak berbuka je ni. Okay. Saya tak puasa dah lama sebab ni. Sebab batuk. Okay first. Nak dapat markah. <laughs> dia band di mana. Okay so you tarik dulu kat tengah. Aduh, patutlah tak dapat dua markah. Dah? Dah betul dah? <coughs> Dekat sini, di tengah-tengah ini, baru ada bending. Okay, so towards the focal point. So kita tahu F2 adalah the focal point. Ada yang buat macam ni, dia kata okey dah siap dia hantar exam jawapannya. Tak dapat markah. You must have an arrow for each of the rays so that we know from where to where the direction. Okey, baru dapat complete two marks. Okey, two marks. Draw a fourth three parallel to the others on the left of the lens which passes through F2. Until it reaches about five zero. <coughs> so ini sebenarnya dia nak kita draw the uh, the uh, this is what we call as principal line eh principal axis. Ipo sama lah principal juga ni. Cuma satu vertical, satu horizontal. Betul lah saya tanya siapa yang tak ambil-ambil kertas lagi ni. Takkan dah saya nak dengar ada print extra-extra. Nanti marah lah pekerja kat pejabat tu kan. Macam ni tu. Kan. Rupanya memang ada makhluk yang tak ambil lagi. Okay so dapat dah satu markah tu. Okay. Now figure 8.1 shows a thin converging lens. The two principal foci are shown. Fokai tu means focal point lah. Okay, so sekarang ni dia kata a vertical object. Object tu 2 cm tall. When you are, okay, when the question give you this value, ya, 2 cm, da da da. So you make sure you draw following the the the, the given instruction, ya. So dia kata a vertical object 2 cm tall. So make sure you draw 2 cm tall. Position to the left of the lens. So this part. With one end on the principal axis. Draw the object in a position which will produce virtual image labeling the object with the letter O. Okay. Banyak arahan dia ni eh. Soalan ni jadi soalan aras tinggi. Sebab you can draw accordingly. And then first you need. And then <coughs> when you want to draw. <coughs> you can take it dulu. Okay. Untuk topik like, okay, so this one must have in your notes ataupun your Zek notes kalau awak dah guna secara bagus lah. Okay, kalau awak dah print baru ke apa tak kisah. Okay, if you have thin lens, ini dengar betul-betul. Saya nak cakap slow-slow je. Okay, that's O. You know what O is. Okay, optical center and then F and then this is F. F dengan F ni about the same lah. Kan? Tak, ini contoh je. Saya nak tunjuk contoh je. Okay. <coughs> eh, perik ni tekak. Diam, diam, diam. Jangan bising, jangan bercakap. You tengok je. So, sekarang ni objek dekat sini ya. Now, now, how, where is the point? Where do, where, where do I position the object? So, kita, saya kata position of the object now is U less than F. Okay, dekat sini you kena tahu apa maksud F. F small letter adalah focal 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 length. Kalau F capital, it's the it's the point. So capital dengan huruf small letter ada very different meaning. Ha, ni bukan frekuensi. Ini tajuk lah eh. <coughs> and then next you need to know what is u u is distance so maksudnya this is about length length siapa distance of ob 
objects daripada mana ke mana. So this is my object. This is my object. So u tu dari mana ke mana? Sini ataupun sini? So that u is actually distance of object from the O. From the optical center. Ataupun from the vertical axis tu. Okay. And then you have, there, there is another symbol, small letter V, which is distance of image from optical center. Jadi saya nak guna ni, this, uh, form, uh, this symbols, yeah. So sekarang ni, I write this symbol, do you understand what it means? U less, so mana U? So this is U. Betul? Distance of object less than F. So what is F? Yeah, focal length. So this is focal length. Do you see that U ni distance dia lesser than F? Alright. So itu takkan dicakap dalam exam. You kena tahu sendiri those symbols. Ataupun lepas ni kalau saya guna awak dah kena tahu dah. Jangan tanya lagi apa benda yang cikgu tulis tu. <coughs> okay. So when object is here, okay, listen, okay, saya tulis ini, ini object, so this is object, so when object is here, where is the image? So you kena tahu when object is here, the image that it will form is is The image characteristic is VOOM. What is VOOM? Virtual Upright Magnified. VOOM. Now, what happened? Dah. Dah habis masa ke kelas? What happened if the object is moved? Now, it is exactly on top of F. So sekarang positionnya ialah u equals to f. Do you understand the symbols? U equals to f. Maksudnya objek atas titik f. Boleh? Alright. <coughs> so apa ciri-ciri image dia? So you kena study lah. So sebenarnya dia adalah v u m at infinity. Okay. B, U, M at infinity. Infinity means you cannot draw. You don't need to draw the image. Image dia somewhere at infinity. Jauh. Alright. And then what happen if the object is moved further away. So now where is the position? So kita kata now the position is. Yes. U is greater than focal length. But. Tengok depan. <coughs> U is less than four. Sorry. <coughs> U is greater than focal length. But less than 2F. What is what is the meaning of 2F? So F is here. 2F is somewhere. Satu. Dua. Macam tu. Jadi 2F tu somewhere here. 2F means the distance is double of the F. So, if the position of the object here, the image you will get now starts to change its character. Masih lagi sama tadi, boom, boomy. It's just that tadi boomy, you tak dapat nak capture it. So, sekarang it start, you start to get real image. And inverted. However, ever, it's still... Rim. Yeah, dia masih lagi magnified. Tapi dua ciri yang atas dah berubah. Boleh Aisyah? Now, ambil ni. Apa saya punya uh, formula sekarang? Formula pula. Uh, uh. U. U equals to 2 S. So cari ciri image dia. Same size. 
same size. Kalau objek tu 2 cm height, the image you will get same size juga 2 cm juga. Saya dah ajar shortcut yang ni, saya ajar dua benda. Saya ajar shortcut jawapan yang awak patut dapat dan saya ajar cara hafal for paper 2. MCQ question Ataupun cara nak confirmkan jawapan awak When you have drawn the answer Tengok betul tak apa yang awak dapat tu Jadi you kena tahu ni And then lastly Okay You move further the image The object Okay the belakang sikit Mesti touch ni eh Mesti touch the exist ya. Eh? So sekarang kita ada U greater than 2F So apa ciri image dia Read. Diminish. <coughs> okay. So kita kata, oh. Image punya ciri-ciri. The further the object from the lens, the smaller the size of image. Boleh? Uh, so dia kata draw So kat mana yang kita akan dapat virtual image Yeah So sama ada ni ataupun ni Alright Tapi dia suruh draw the image nanti Jadi kita letaklah yang U, U less than F So kat mana nak draw the object Where to draw the object Less than F So you must have your object somewhere here in between O dengan F Tak boleh on F Tak boleh further than F Itu reason dia You kena draw sendiri object Tapi sekarang you tak payah guna O dekat sini Dia kata Label this object with O Okay so ni O Next and then make sure lah you guna pembaris Ni 2cm ya Kalau tak 2cm salah Draw two rays showing Draw two rays showing how the virtual image is formed Two Jadi apa rules tadi? Alah lambatnya Okay, mana dah? So uh, First, okay tulis kat mana-mana ya -mana, Bila nak exit, tulis kat mana-mana Parallel Focal point And then optical center. Ini line tu bersambung, yang ni lain-lain. Jadi, ni dia. One. Okay, masih lagi tak dapat satu markah. And then bagaimana? F terbalik. F2 ke F1? Okay, dia bukan reflection. Dia reflection, so dia bending kat sini. To the center. Lemak. Ah, Berlawan pula ah. Okay So sekarang ni we want to form the image Kita nak image tu can be drawn Jadi it, eh, Kalau you sambung kat bawah ni Dia tetap akan menjauh 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 Will never interact Intersect So You gunakan Wajib guna pencil and dotted line Dotted line means Apa maksud dotted lines? Dotted line means it's virtual Kalau solid line means it's real Okay Jadi kita buat apa lagi? Letter I Jadi letaklah I sini <coughs> Betul Okay Better it's way, that the way lah. Yeah, sebab dalam dalam SPM dia ada uh, e, uh, ni. Jadi um, dalam ID CSC pun sama. Okay. Now. So for number six, you know. Hello. Hello. Um, dulu 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 dulu. Cepat ni ya. 
Oh ada beberapa kesalahan yang saya rasa dia bukan uh, ni tapi kebiasaan pelajar dia memang buat ala kadar. Okay first ada yang akan buat macam ni. Lepas tu pergi mana? Pergi di bawah ni. Okay mungkin dia okay lagi. And then kita nak point yang sama tau. Kita nak start daripada point yang sama. To the O. You kena guna sharpen pencil. Ataupun you belilah mechanical pencil just for drawing. Especially lines. You tak boleh langsung draw guna pen. Itu satu. <coughs> Kedua. Kalau you guna pencil tebal. Lepas tu you buat. Oi. Tebal tau. No. Kalau you guna ketak pen tebal, kan? Dia macam terlari tau. Bila dia terlari, nampak tak? Ha, macam tu. Ataupun kan ada student dia tak buat. Dia buat ala kadar, dia buat kat sini. Nampak macam betul. Tapi that is actually wrong. First salah, dia boleh jadi salah sebab dia dah ambil point yang lain tu. Sepatutnya dekat tip of the point tu. Betul? Pointer. And then sepatutnya guna pencil yang tajam. Jadi bila macam ni, katalah soalan nak suruh you draw, are you kira? Kalau soalan buat dajal kan, you kena kira berapa cm. You kira-kira, you pergi jawapan akan lain lah daripada skema. Sebab you lukis sembrono, tak boleh. You tahu roof, you tahu roof and then you kena jadi orang teliti lah. Susah sangat tu dalam hidup ni jadi orang teliti. Ha, macam tu. Tapi OCD tu payah juga kan. Cuma saya kata teliti lah. Okay. Oh, saya pun salah ni nampak? Ha, ha. Jadi awak kena be careful. Kalau macam ni kan. Ha, dia betul-betul kat atas tu. <coughs> okay. Lepas tu kalau lah awak dapat objek image dia macam ni ya. Eh? Sebab ini ada orang kalau you betul okey lah. Tapi kalau ada orang yang salah ni saya nak just you tahu lah kalau so that you tak buat. Okay, nampak tak? Kadang-kadang kan dia terlebih lebih besar ni. You check apa yang masalah you. Kan? Kenapa dia terlebih ni? Ha, mesti sepatutnya sama je. Ha, mungkin markah dah kurang lah ni. ni. Jadi kita tengok betul-betul kat mana line kita yang silap tu draw betul-betul. Okay? So sepatutnya and then kan ramai juga student saya tak tahulah kenapa. Saya tak tahu kenapa. Tiap tak tahu ada student macam ni. Apa tu? Student tu dia akan draw je suka-suka. Kalau line intersect kat sini, dia draw lah. Lah garis lurus macam ni je. Ataupun dia tinggalkan je. Ha cikgu saya dah siap. Cikgu isi lah tempat kosong. Ha banyak cantik bagi pangkah je. You ikut arahan. Dia kata nak image, you draw the image. And then image macam ni ke? Garis lurus je ke? Ha ada tu. Ha tu oh, dia kata lagi dia nak label. You label lah. Baca eh arahan. <coughs> Describe image. Banyak line. Tapi sebenarnya apa? Ha, tulis di balik. Virtual. Upright. Magnified. Nak guna perkataan lain boleh. Tapi saya galakkan ni. Sebab ini hafal ni senang. Boom, bumi, rim, ris, rip. Senang kan? Tujuh. Eh penat lah. Berapa habis ni kelas? Penat sebab saya banyak cakap. Awak pula present. Jawapan nombor tujuh. Okay nombor tujuh ni easy peasy. Boleh. Siapa dah lukis? Ah nak kita ayat gila. Saya dah anggut dia jauh dia siap. Nak juga so saya cakap. Cepat cepat saya bagi dua gula-gula kalau ke depan ni. Ya Hadi, kam. Nak roh? Siapa boleh tunjuk how to get too much for this simple drawing? 7A. Ah, boleh, kam. Come forward and draw. You le, so what je. Alamak, my pencil. Nampak macam betul? Ada? Contoh guna 
Nampak <laughs> macam betul. Tapi saya tak nampak lah betul-betul. Awak kenapa guna highlighter, guna pen ni? Kenapa dia tak straight? Ha? Apa dia? Dia lukis. Lukis je, lukis je. Alah dia ni. Okay, dah. Sebab drawing dekat uh, ni lah, dekat iPad, tak biasa. Oh. Ya yeah, betul kan balik? Eh, tak, 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 habis. Hey, kenapa tak, charging? Okay, thank you. Berapa markah dapat ni? Dua. Kenapa? Okay, ah. Uh. Ini dia guna iPad kot, dia tak biasa. Lagi, awak punya drawing macam ni, awak nak tunjuk apa visual? Kam, kam. Tak dapat satu markah je. Nanti saya cakap. Okay, first soalan minta three lines sahaja. Jangan lebih-lebih, jangan kurang. Okay. <coughs> Check kawan, ada tak yang terlebih-terlebih? Cubit kan perut ke apa? Cek lagi kawan lain, ada tak yang terlebih-terlebih? Ada tak yang terkurang? Saya mohon dengan sangat, bacalah soalan ya. Bayangkan tadi I dah hilang markah sebab tak label je pun. Contoh, dah satu markah hilang. Lepas tu image lukis main-main, tak ada anak panah. Dah dua markah hilang. Ada orang tadi... Drawing light tadi, dia dapat kosong dari per tiga. Padahal dia lukis cantik semua. Tapi kosong dia dapat. Sebab tak ada aero langsung. Yang lain semua betul. Okay, dia buat tak faham orang belakang kan. Ha, kosong. Saya jumpa student macam tu untuk SPM. Awak bayangkan kesiannya saya pada student tu. Tu bukan student saya. Tapi tak boleh nak tolong. Kalau dulu-dulu boleh tolong tau. Saya ambil pensel, saya tolong guru gariskan. Alah, nak tuliskan arak panah je pun kan. Dia tahu dia faham. Ha, so kalau zaman dulu boleh ambil pensel, cikgu tuliskan dia. Banyak saya buat macam tu. Guna screen. Kita scan nak tambah apa. Tak boleh. Ha, jadi sekarang tak ada chance langsung nak tolong student. Tapi kalau saya tolong, saya tolong tu pun bukan sesiapa, tak tahu siapa pun kan. Cuma, <coughs> you jangan buat macam tu lah. IGCSE ni kalau banyak markah ni tak tahu. Okay, three lines. Macam mana dapat three lines? Okay. So, ni dapat, boleh dapat three lines tak ni? Okay, kalau dalam betul-betul ni mungkin lah dia buat straight line. Okay, dapatlah tiga, uh, berapa markah? Dua. Dapat dua markah. Cuma saya nak point out. Saya nak point out. Garisan mesti perpendicular to the magnet. So means you must use a ruler for this middle line. Yep. Next. Mesti in order for this line, this specific line ni dah dapat markah, you kena ada line, ada, ada arrow. Okay. Yang kedua punya line, you draw curve. Something like that lah. Okay. Oh, tak jadi. Degil je dah. Lama, tapi tak betul. Okay. Then dia ada arrow macam tu. Okay, cuma what I'm trying to tell you, there is nothing mentioned about the strength. So, kita assume both of the, dia ada cakap identical ke? Tak ada. Kita just assume they are the almost similar apa? Magnets. Lepas tu you cuba tunjukkan distance ni lebih kurang sama dengan distance tu. To, to show that the strength about the seal. Remember last time saya cakap the feet lines tu tells you the the density of the lines. Kalau banyak lines tells you the strength. So dia stronger. Kalau line tu jauh maksudnya dia less strength. Dia weak. <coughs> Jangan lukis sangat ketara. Macam ni. Jangan lukis sangat ketara macam ni. Kalau you nak lukis macam tu, yang ni pun you lukis macam ni. Lebih kurang je. Okay. So dapat tu marks. Figure 7.2 is a repeat of figure 7.1. Okay. 
showing two magnets. Draw the position of floating compass needle when it comes to rise in gap between the north pole and south pole. Ni eksperimen yang mana ni? Kalau awak buat masa lower form dulu, form apa? Ha? Form electric form tu ke form one? Jadi eh, saya search magnet. Ni ya. Awak ingat tak awak ada buat ni? You letak magnet-magnet dekat situ. Ha kan? Okay. You letak magnet-magnet dekat sini. Hello, hello. Ha. Jadi itulah soalan dia. So dia kata kat sini kita ada compass. You know, you need to know compass system selalunya if there is no magnetic source the, the, the needle always pointing to the north of the earth. Betul? Nak cari tempat pengakap kan? Ha, guna kan. Tapi once you place the compasses near magnetic material, what's going to happen? Mana pergi arrow dia? North ke mana? 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 Ha? Ni betul? Okay, ni betul? South siapa? South of the earth ke? South of what? Ha, so, you have to draw like this. Okay, tapi <coughs> you don't need all the, the circles semua tu. All the details tak perlu. Kita nak the arrow je sebab dia kata Position of the plotting, sebab dia soalan dia specific talking about the needle. Jadi you don't have to draw the, 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 tu lah fancy-fancy tu. Yeah. Kalau dia minta, dia just compass dia, oh look at, look at lah macam ni. Now explain. Kenapa? Kenapa macam tu? <coughs> Saya dah sihat dah weekend. Jumpa awak batuk balik. Dia berjangkit-jangkit. Lepas tu awak sihat, saya batuk kat awak, awak batuk balik. Dah bila saya ni nak break weh. Ha, kena cuti dah lama-lama kan. Bila nak cuti? Lambat lagi kan? Lambat eh. Tak sabar eh. Hmm. Bulan sembilan time awak exam ke sebelum awak exam? Saya pergi Sarawak seminggu. So kalau nak belajar dengan saya, awak belajar sekarang eh. Ha. Sarawak, free of charge. Ditaja sepenuhnya Syiwa. <laughs> tak jadi fesi, guru marah. Okay, needle aligns with field. Lepas tu, align selari. Ikut arah yang sama. Sebab kalau kita buat magnetic field lines pun, kita draw macam ni tadi, betul tak? Actually ni, ni, siapa tanya soalan tu tadi? Uh, Farah. Ni line kan? Sama kan? Ha. Ha, OMG lah. Okay. Your God is my God too. <laughs> okay, tak adalah. <laughs> tak adalah. Okay, needle aligns with field. Lepas tu apa lagi you nak explain? Kenapa dia macam tu? And then, now what about the point? Ha. So, ini dia punya uh, garisan tu selari. Tapi the, uh, the, the arrow tu, Yes, North Pole of Needle attracted to, yes, to the South of Magnet. Alah, simplenya. You nampak tak? You faham. Tapi you termalu-malu nak tulis. You tulis je apa yang you faham tu. Jawapan dia as simple as that. Surprise kan? Awak expect apa jawapan dia? Apa yang, <laughs> tak tahu nak tulis apa kan. Hmm. Okay. Now, dia kata describe a method of demagnetizing a bar magnet. For this question, you read, you know. You story to your friends, you remember. You don't tell stories, you will not remember. 
you watch movie you remember sikit ah macam tu ah <coughs> oh ada kat sini ah Ha? Tak faham. Sorry? Ada dah tu sebab dia nak nak remove the magnetic tu. Okay ni boleh tengok eh video ni. Dah tengok kan? You dah pernah buat eh? Okay. And then kita ada... Oh ni pun dah tengok juga. Okay. How to demagnetize a bar magnet? Place in a pot ataupun solar noid. Tapi tak boleh letak je lah. Dalam tu mesti ada alternating current. You tengok eh. Then we draw. Ada cara lain? Ah, Heat. Ataupun heat with hammer you kena baca lah kalau nak tahu kenapa eh ha you baca dalam dalam google banyak explanation yes dalam zenot pun ada explain dia punya in terms of atom semua tu ni semua kena tahu 